Hey guys, for today's video, we're going to be doing a high contrast money piece while preserving her depth and dimension throughout the rest of her hair. So to see how we go about doing the service, keep watching. You can follow me on Instagram at Christy at the cottage. All right, guys, here's my clients. Before, really quickly, we're going to do a trim before we get into the service. But right now, we're going to go in the back and talk about what we're going to do today. Hey, guys. So I'm just getting ready for my color that I'm going to do today. I'm super excited. So I haven't done my client's hair for like, it's been a year and a half. So she has a lot of grow out, which actually works really great for what we're doing because she wants to do like that really trendy like brighter piece here and then maybe some like brighter pieces through like the underneath um so she's really like in that high contrast look so today we're going to do like our hairline foils give her a nice bold money piece but blend it into the root so it doesn't grow out too heavy and then we're also going to go through and add some darker through the ends of her hair just to like give her more contrast um, she really likes the ashier tone, so her hair is very, like, gray right now with the overtone shampoo that she uses. So we're gonna try to lift through some of those areas and see how light we can get it. Um, we're also gonna add some facial framing. Her hair is very long right now. So we're gonna do a quick little snip. Maybe, like, four inches or something. She likes it more one length. Um, so doing that little snip plus, like, the facial framing layering is what we're gonna do so that's the service today i don't think this will take very long i mean i know i say that all the time and then it ends up being like five hours but i just don't think that's gonna happen today so i'm super excited for the service she's, she's such a little cutie so um i'm just excited for like the after pictures and how they're gonna look so let's get on with the service i'm gonna use short scarf blonde me with 20 volume and Olaplex her natural hair is probably like a level four so we're gonna make sure to take like really thin slices however we're staying mostly around the face where it's a little bit more fine so it should lift pretty good so um that's what we're going to do today and here's the lightener we're using Schwarzkopf Blonde Me with 20 volume and Olaplex All right, my clients before again, those ends are pretty scraggly. So we're going to start with doing like a good trim. She also said she wanted to cut a lot of facial framing. So that's where we're going to start. The service off is make sure that we're going to do the haircut first. You always want to make sure you do the haircut first before you do a balayage because, you know, what if you do all the blonde and then you cut it off above where you did the balayage and now you lost all your blonde that you worked hard for so make sure if you're doing like a drastic change that you always go through and just do like a rough cut to start the service off and then um just even it out and double check your work and everything after the color is done so we're just gonna go through i was asking her if that's where she liked the length to be at so we're gonna go through and just slide cut and blend her facial framing all the way down don't ever grab like I try to start the facial framing and not go beyond like the back of the ear or else they might feel like their hair is too short so we're just slide cutting down and um, making sure this blends in with the back but not going really much further back beyond behind her ear for her facial framing sections All right, the reason why not to go much further back behind like the front quadrants behind the ear when you're doing facial framing. When I was in beauty school, this girl had hair down to her butt. It was all one length. And um, the instructor ended up doing layers. He pulled all of her hair like straight back down the center and pulled all of her hair forward and did very blunt, very heavy facial framing when her hair was pulled back behind her shoulders and like the front section was falling forward it was like sitting at her shoulders and maybe a little bit below that because he did such severe layers and brought it back 
um, all the way behind her ear, like to the back section of her head. So when all of her hair was like pulled back, it looked like she had nothing left in the front end. So never really go back behind the ear. Just be very, very cautious of that because you could take off a lot of that length in the front if you're not careful. And I mean, if somebody wants like a very deep V cut, that's different, which is essentially what that gal ended up having, but it's not what she wanted and she was literally crying. So just be careful when you're doing like facial framing to, um, just slide cut a little bit and you can always do a little bit heavier if they want it heavier, but just start a little bit softer and then, um, go heavier over time if they feel like they want a little bit more, but that's just something I learned and that I will always stand by that to not go back behind the ear to preserve the length in the front. Was, okay, really quickly, does that facial framing layering look okay to you? Yes. And then does this, like, <laughs> short pieces in there, like, does that look yes. good to you? Okay. Yes. All right, so now we're just finishing off the haircut and taking probably, like, three and a half inches off the length, and her hair felt so much better. So now we're going to move into the color part of the service. She wanted it to blend really nicely, so we are going to start off and do these hairline foils. That way, this will give her the brightness like around the face, but again, these foils grow out really nice and subtle. They're not like too heavy, so just some really fine weaves, and we have that just a smaller piece um, kind of right on her hairline of her natural. So that will help it grow out a little bit softer too, because this foil is not like the first foil, like directly right on her hairline. There's a little bit of a subsection of her natural before we start doing this foiling. So that will help blend as this grows out when she pulls her hair back. So we're just going to do like three of these foils on the side and then repeat on this other section. All right, now that we're on to this side, we're just going to repeat the same thing in this section. And I want to talk about her color. So she wants a high contrast. And I was kind of thinking, you know, when somebody likes having blonde hair and then they pull their hair forward, um, that like dark underneath part makes them feel really, really dark. And they usually want to brighten that up. So I was fully prepared to like really heavy um, underneath hairline foils. 
but she actually said that she really liked having that darker underneath because it made that front brighter blonde stand out a little bit more so keep that in mind if somebody really wants to do like a really bright money piece and have like the really high contrast against the dark that might be something to remember is to leave the dark underneath like leave it alone I feel like when somebody comes in and they want to do blonde and have brightness like sometimes we overfoil we overwork and feel like we need to do more and that's just really not the case like especially like high contrast is coming back like it's definitely not like chunky foils like it was in the early 2000s not the 90s the early 2000s um we did not have chunky foils in the 90s okay I would know I was doing hair when it like became popular like in early 2004 2005 I think is when it was like at it at its biggest peak so um Anyways, that just like gets under my skin when I see that. But I I digress. I'm sorry. So make sure if somebody really likes the high contrast, like leave that depth and that darker area alone. Don't overfoil. You'll see as the service goes on, like I really barely touched that underneath part. Some of the pictures that she was showing me, it was like um, lots of dark, but you could definitely see like just really bright like ribbons through the hair. So that's what our goal is today. So I'm going to really try to keep it light through the back section and make sure that I'm not touching any of that, like that hair that's falling underneath right now. I'm making sure that I'm not going to touch that. So that when it, way, when it like pulls forward, she has all that nice dark and then the blonde will lay on top of that, making it stand out a little bit brighter. So now we're going to go through and do her money piece. And again, she wants it nice and bright, but she wants it to blend a little bit softer into her roots. So we're going to weave it back, comb it, and just kind of feather up into her root area. So we are going to go a little bit higher, but we're not going directly up to the scalp. So we're just going to go all the way through the ends of the hair. And then you'll see me just kind of feather in that like top inch into her roots so she's going to be nice and bright all the way up, but she's just not necessarily going super high up into the scalp. So we're just going to do a few of these foils where we're going to do the same weave back comb. And then I'll take like a thicker section, pull it all the way forward and then back comb it, weave it. And then that's going to create like a softer blend um, through like the sides of her hair. So she does, she wants it to be like nice and bright of a money piece, but you know, you say, you see some people that just have like, it's super chunky and super strappy and it's almost so solid that it, that's like not what she wants. So I'm making sure to do this like a little bit more blended and softer. So that's definitely something that you want to talk to your client about. There's so many different types of money pieces. There's some where it like, you know, where it hits maybe ar around the eyebrow, maybe they want it like super bright and solid, maybe they want it more blended. So make sure you have that conversation with your client. How do they want their money piece to grow out? Do they do they care if it's like a super harsh line or do they want it a little bit softer? If they don't care, then like stack in like three slices back to back to make it really, really bright and really stand out. Um, but if they do care, then maybe do like a really soft weave back comb it just to soften it up a little bit. So make sure you have that conversation with your client on all the different types of money pieces that they like, and then also let them know, um, you're going to notice the grow out and feel it a little bit more probably like in a month and a half or so. Is that going to bother you? And then just, you know, base your work off of what they have to say. All right, so here you can see I'm taking a little bit thicker of a section, weaving it so that way she has her natural to help it blend, back combing it, and I'm pulling it all forward, over directing it forward. So that way it's just going to create like a really soft blend where it just feathers back a little bit where the brightness is. And then directly off of the sides of this piece right here that I'm doing, I'm going to go through underneath where her hair parts and do another section, um, just one more foil underneath. That way it helps it blend. Um, so it's not just like this one strap of like 
not like a strap because we're blending it but i don't want her to have just this like money piece and then it doesn't blend through the sides of her hair so when i go through and do the underneath foil and i'm just doing the one on either side that's gonna help it blend a little bit more and just be a little bit softer All right, so this weave that I'm doing right here, you can see where her hair parts and it's going directly underneath diagonal back on the side of where her hair parts. Um, just right behind to the side of that money piece that we were doing. So this is just gonna help blend her hair from the sides of her head to the money piece and it just gives it like a nice connection. So that way she has like even brightness all the way around her hairline. All right, so you'll see me keep pulling her hair forward and seeing exactly where is her hair going to fall. So you'll notice that every time I kind of go back and forth, I'm going to keep pulling her hair forward and seeing where it lays. So I'm just trying to see exactly where do I need to like paint the hair and how much of a section do I need to do. She doesn't want the blonde to go like in the top layer of like up into the rooty area she wants it to just be like say as if somebody just had like no facial framing at all it's just all natural long and blonde that money piece section that you would do that would reach all the way through like the ends of her hair because it was just nice and long but because we ended up cutting all of her facial framing now i have to go through like almost the whole side section of her hair and paint that to make sure that I have that blonde going through the whole length of her front like facial framing pieces. So that's where I'm trying to go through and see exactly like, okay, 
how much hair do I need to pull forward? Where is it going to fall? How is it going to lay? And where do I need to paint this to make sure that it's like, that it looks like it's just the facial framing part that's um, blonde and not like going too far back into the rest of her hair where she feels like she has like a full balayage. Um, at the toning part, I told her that I want to go back through after her hair is all like washed out and everything and then we'll go back through and add that dimension because I realized that I'm having to take a lot of this hair and like pull it forward and paint it where normally if she just didn't really have any layers or any facial framing then I could just work on like that front section would be the blonde and like the actual sides of her hair I probably wouldn't have to paint too much but because I'm having to paint the sides a little bit more um, because of the facial framing, I can't really go through yet with the dark. Um, so I just told her I'd rather see how it is this process. How much dark do you want to go back through and add in? And so I was waiting to do that part of the service until after all the blonding was done to see exactly how much dark do I need? Where do I need to put it? How do I need to break this up or whatever? Um, and just so you know, we ended up not doing the dark she ended up really being happy with the hair she loved how the money piece looked and everything that was like her main focus and because she still had so much dark from her natural grow out she felt like she didn't need to go back through and like add any more dimension into her hair so at this point in the service though I'm kind of thinking that's exactly what I'm gonna do though I'm thinking I am gonna go through and add some more dark dimension back into her hair um so I'm still trying to like figure out exactly where my placement is going to be. So just know as you're watching the service, like I thought I was going to add that in there. Um, I thought I was going to go through and do like a slightly darker, cooler blonde shade. We ended up not doing that either. So, um, so now that we're reaching, like now I'm pulling more hair forward because I'm afraid that where I'm stopping at right now, I was worried like maybe that is just the facial framing part that just is like halfway down, but not like extending all the way down through the ends of her facial framing. So I was like, I'm just going to do more because I'm worried that if I stop here, um, this isn't going to be like all of your facial framing and then you're going to be like super bright but like only halfway down your facial framing part. So I just ended up going through and painting more towards just like the end of this section to make sure that she had like the brightness going all the way down. I hope that makes sense. I feel like it's kind of confusing, but like um, it's just hard to like try and explain it when I'm doing a voiceover versus like if I was actually doing it, I could tell you guys like what I was trying to explain. So hopefully like it makes sense to you guys. So I'm pulling that hair forward now to see where is it going to lay and how is it going to blend. And luckily everything blended really nicely like when we were all done. And I'm asking her like do you want me to go back through and add any more or do you feel like that's okay? So towards the end of my application I did end up going through and just doing like um, a really small soft veil over the top. And I did some like wider pieces um like with more of a subsection in between that way I could make sure that the sides weren't just like blonde that we had some of that brightness blending through the back section of the hair too so um we're just gonna finish doing our application I've only got a few more pieces to do with the sides and then we'll go through and start blending through the back and just picking up some ribbons in the back underneath section of the hair too.
All right, so now that we're in the back, I'm just going to take a few little fine pieces back comb and like weave them, make sure that we just have these few little bright pieces through the ends because I want to make sure that we have connection from the front to the back, even though at this point in the service, I'm thinking we're going to go through and add some depth back in the hair. She did say that she wanted to have like some contrasting brighter pieces too. So I'm just going to go through and paint through mostly the ends of the hair where she was already pre-lightened and just try to brighten this up a little bit more. And then um, that's it for like this very, very top layer. These are just some really, really fine pieces. And then I'm going to do a thick section directly below this and then just go kind of sporadically through the underneath and grab some like pre-existing lighter pieces and just paint through those to brighten them up a little bit more and then that will be it. I'm really just doing maybe like three different sections with like a heavy midsection um uh subsection in between so that way um she kind of just wanted it to like you know, when your hair pulls forward, how you can see like some brighter pieces showing through. She definitely wanted to stay away from like having more of a overall lighter blended appearance um, and just give like some more like bright pieces. So that's what we're just finishing up right now. And then um, she will process for like 30 minutes. So you can see here how I'm just taking like a wider section and it's more of like a piecier section. That's what's going to create more of a contrast. How before you could see she came in, she was really blended, really heavily blonde through like the ends of her hair. That's because we did like um like the whole width of that section like underneath versus just gra like grabbing larger pieces and painting those so this is going to help create more of that contrasting blonde that she's wanted versus like more of a blended which is what she came in previously so I think it just helps to like go through maybe take like two very wide weaves with like a very distinct like subsection in between and that will give you like some more high contrasting pieces versus being too blended Thank you. 
All right, so you can see that I'm really keeping it super simple and limited in the back. Just a few little pieces for brightness through the underneath. And then I just took some really fine weaves through that top layer just to help it blend with the sides. Um, and this is going to sit for just like 30 minutes in process. And then I will come back and check it to make sure that it's okay. And also, before I let it process, I went and checked through the ends of her hair just because she has been bleached out before. And I made sure that she wasn't over processing or damaging or anything so at that point after double checking her hair and making sure that it's processing okay um that's now when she processed for 30 minutes i'm checking it now it lightened really nicely so um i'm just going to let this finish sitting for you know a few minutes past this warm stage and then we will rinse her out Okay, so my client just got done processing and we rinsed her out. She's sitting at the shampoo bar right now with a deep conditioner in her hair. We're getting ready to tone her for her lightest blonde. Um, she still wants to stay nice and like ashy, but still uh, bright at the same time. So because ashier tones tend to deposit a little bit darker, I want to try and stay with like maybe a little drop of level 9 PA, mostly 10 PA and 10 V. Um, let me see if I have, I'm gonna add a little bit of the 10 NB also to keep it nice and bright um, to prevent it from like overtoning though. Um, because we've lifted through some other color, she does have some like warmer areas maybe like eight and a half, probably like a nine, honestly. Um, but I told her that I want to start and tone for like the lightest shade. And then if it doesn't cover those warmer areas, then we'll tone down from there. So this is our first formulation for like the lightest blonde. If it ends up toning down the rest of those warmer shades, then that's great. But we're just going to start here first. All right, you guys know I really tried to like write out my formulation. It was just too difficult. So I did the majority of the formulation, the 10PA, 10V equal parts. I did probably a little bit less with the 9PA. And then I really just did maybe like um, a few heavy drops of the warmer tone, the NB. And that's because those warmer tones in there that's what the level nine was for to help kind of cool those little pieces down we really wanted to try and stay as bright as possible but i knew that there was still like some warmth existing in the hair she ended up really liking the way that the color was i gave her the option like i dried her hair um just gave her a really quick rough dry and asked her like are you happy with the toner i was fully prepared to like go back through add more dark in through the hair um, hit those slightly warmer level nine areas, but she was really happy with everything and ended up not wanting to go back through and do anything. She just thought everything blended so well already. She knew with the shampoo that she uses that it would touch any of those just slightly warmer pieces. And I pointed them out. I had her grab the mirror, look at it. And I just said, look, this is like just a slight warmth to it. Um, not even bad or anything, but just because I know how cool she likes her hair, I just wanted to give her the option, like, we can tone this right now if you want to, and she was, like, completely fine. So, um, that's what adding that level nine was for, just to, like, cool it down a little bit more. 
I probably could have added a little bit more of it to the formulation, but I just didn't want to darken the blonde down too much. So, um, and then also that NB in there to just help it prevent from overtoning, especially around the face and those brighter ends where it's more porous and it can really grab. So that's just the way that I like to break down my formulation and try to explain it for you. I really tried to write it out. It just wasn't working. Um, it was too hard to try to figure out like all the different, like, you know, how many grams or fractions of whatever I was using. So uh, anyways, here's her hair, just rough dried. You can see the blend really good. Um, still lots of contrast. The biggest part that she was concerned about was around the front of the face and just having that really big piece, that nice big bold money piece of brightness in the front and then making sure like the blonde extended all the way down through the end. So I'm glad that we did our foil the way we did where we went through and basically did from the ear forward, but hit most of the ends as we got down through like um, the lower ends of her facial framing. That way, you know, since we trimmed a lot of her facial framing off, if we didn't do all of that, then her blonde, her brighter blonde would have just stopped like around her chin or whatever. So I'm glad we went through and did a heavier amount around her face than what was expected it really helped bring that brightness like through the whole um, length of her facial framing pieces. So and then you'll be able to see as I'm curling her hair that we just ended up putting a few little pieces of brighter blonde in there. We didn't want to go too heavy, um, just enough to give it some like bright pops of blonde in there. So you'll see me kind of flipping back and forth. Well, you probably won't see me because I'm not leaving a whole bunch of footage in of styling the hair, but I'm using this Paul Mitchell flat iron. I really love this. I like doing a flat iron more around the face because I like the type of curl that I can get more than just like a curling iron. So it's a Paul Mitchell flat iron. I like it because I can adjust the heat on it. Um, keep your heat below like 350 for blonde especially or else you might like burn the toner out and then also the curling iron I'm using if you watch Jay-Z styles here on YouTube it's her curling iron I like it because again you can adjust the temperature but also um, it's a longer barrel so I love that for like curls for extensions or longer hair or whatever um, it's like one of my go-to styling tools now and then I'm using the Kenra hairspray which um it's a little bit stronger of a hold. So I just wanted to break all that stuff down for you. All right, so here's her before again, a good practically two years of grow out, super rooty, and here's the after, much brighter around the face, but still blended into her roots, so that way if she wants to go another year and a half, you know, she's not going to, but if she wants to go a little bit longer, her grow out won't be as harsh. Here's the back again, and I'm definitely glad we snipped a couple little inches off. Her hair felt so much better, and we're still able to keep a lot of length, but it just looks so much healthier. And here is the after, and she really loves how bright and bold that front money piece is, and with her, all the roots that she has, that natural contrast just really helped with the style that she was wanting because we ended up not even having to put any of that dark back in her hair and you can see through the ends she has a lot of contrast still so yeah she was really happy this took about 
uh, maybe four hours and the total cost was $255. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you like this video and don't forget to like and subscribe.